Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf uh, Samaches, Daf 68 of Masech Daf uh, It's kind of like a funny little Daf, maybe. Um, at the beginning we just kind of like continue talking about uh, like Mitzorahs of Tamei Meis, Shtickle focusing on the Balkaria a little bit. Um, then we get to some Agadatas, some of them are interesting. Um, Oh, yeah. So remember Andaf Kuf Gimel of Masechta Erevin, there was an extremely confusing Gemara about removing warts in the Beis HaMikdash. Um, it had to do with the Gemara in Pesachim. Well, here we are. So we kind of repeat that um, Gemara. But I think here in Pesachim, it's arguably only half as difficult. So um, anyways, and then we get into a machlokas between Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Yoshua regarding Simchas Yamtif, which is an interesting machlokas. So it's like kind of an interesting daf because you have some parts that are confusing, some parts that maybe don't read so well, but also some interesting agadatas and machlokas. And so you got everything here on daf Samaches of Masech the Psachim. So let's get started. We are on um, daf Samaches about five lines in, two, four, six lines in. Meisve. So we have a kasha. We had said that a Balkari is like a Zav in that he is not allowed in Machne Shechina, he's not allowed in Machne Leviya. So we have a question on that because we're going to argue that actually maybe he is allowed in Machne Leviya. Let's see. Meisve, we have a Kasha, Metzora, Chomer, Mizav. So a Mitzorah is more stringent than a Zav, fine. V'zav chamer mitmei meis, and a Zav is more stringent than a Tmei meis. Okay, no chidushim here. Now is where this Brisa gets a little bit cryptic, which is what we're going to try to figure out. And yeah, this, some parts of the next few lines are going to read better than others. So now continues the Brisa, and it says, Yatsu balkeri she Tmei meis chamer mimenu. What in the world does this mean? So now a balkeri somehow breaks out of this chain, right? We said that Mitzorah is Muhammad and Zav, Zav is Muhammad and Tmei Meis, okay? So now Balkari somehow breaks out of this, okay? What does that mean? She Tmei Meis Chamer Mimenu, that a Tmei Meis is more stringent than a Zav, uh, a Balkari, all right? So my Yatza, so what does it mean that this Balkari has left? What did he leave? So we, what we want to argue is to say Yatza Michlal Zav, that a Balkari has left the realm of being a Zav, Uvalichlal Tmei Meis, and has become in the realm of a Tmei Meis, the Tmei Meis Chomer Mimenu, because a Tmei Meis is more stringent than it, okay, I don't know, and therefore, because Tmei Meis is more stringent than it, we'll treat it like a Tmei Meis, I guess, Umutu B'Machne Leviya, and therefore we'll say that it's permitted in Machne Leviya. Okay, maybe because, like, I guess if, Tmei Meis is more chomer than a Balkari, then certainly a Zav is more chomer than a Balkari. And if Zav is more chomer than Tmei Meis, then why not just compare Balkari to like sort of the least chomer thing of it? So that would be a Tmei Meis. And Tmei Meis is a lot of Machna Levia. So let's say that a Balkari is a lot of Machna Levia. Okay. So Gemara says, Lo. No, that's not what it means that it is left. Rather, what it means is, Yotzimi Machne Tmei Meis. No, it means that it has left the realm of a, the camp of Tmei Meis, which is Machne Levia, Venichnas the Machne Zav, and went into the camp of a Zav, Afagav, the Tmei Meis Chomer Mimenu, even though Tmei Meis is more stringent than it. And this, I think, makes more sense. Demutur um, Ba'ano B'Machne Levia, right? That Tmei Meis is a lot of Machne Levia, Lemai Didamile Midaminonle, because we compare it to what's similar to it. So, meaning, so, okay, we have this Brisa, which is a little bit weird. There's that last piece of like, Yatza Balkari Shetmemes Chomer Mimenu, and it's a little bit difficult to understand. So, the conclusion of the Gemara is like this, and this does make sense. So, you have Mitzorah. That's the most stringent. Next is Zav. And then next comes a Tmemes. Now, what's interesting is a Balkari which, if you would think along this, the line of things, would be the most string, uh, the most uh, lenient of all. And therefore, if anything, it would make sense to put it in the most lenient 
at least the most lenient category, which is Tamimais, and say that it's allowed in Machna Leviyah, and yet what the Bryce is saying, Yotza Balkari, that a Balkari kind of breaks out of this pattern where the less stringent, the more camps you're allowed into, and breaks out of that pattern and nonetheless puts it with a Zub, who's not allowed in Machna Levia, um, and is restricted to the city of Jerusalem, but can't go into Machna Levia. So it kind of goes out of the order of, of things. You would think that it should have the most lenient level of quarantine, and yet um, it doesn't have the most lenient. It has sort of one level up, which is the level of a Zav, because it is, after all, similar to a Zav. It's an emission, right? Both a Zav and a Valkyrie are a uh, emission from a man's body. Well, there you have it. Balkari is not allowed in Machna Levia. Okay, another bit of Gemara, also regarding the Balkari and where he's allowed to go. Also, like, not super easy to read, but we'll kind of work it in the best we can. So, Tanitana Kamad Rav Yitzchak Bar Avdimi. So, a teacher taught before Rav Yitzchak Bar Avdimi. Right, so the Pasuk says, in the context of a Balkari, Right, he's got to leave the camp, he can't come into the camp. So the question is, what camps are we talking about? Leaving, coming, what are we talking about? So the Pasuk says, So he's got to leave the camp. So we want to say that that means the Machne Shechina. He's got to leave Machne Shechina. And he's not allowed to come into the camp. He's not allowed to come into the Levite camp. So here's how we see that a Balkari needs to leave two camps. He needs to leave the Machna Shechina and the Machna Levia. Okay. That was what the Tana taught to Rav Yitzchak Bar Abdimi. That it says, He's got to leave the camp. That means he's got to leave Machna Shechina. He can't come into the camp. We're going to say that that refers to Machna Levia. Therefore, a Balkari is kicked out of both Machna Shechina and Machna Levia. Basically like a Zav. Now, Omar Le, so Yitzchak Baravdimi says to this teacher, Akatilo Ayalte Afikte, Lishnachrina Akatilo Afikte Ayalte. So these two things are a little bit difficult to understand, but let's start with this. The Pasuk says he's got to leave one camp, and then it says he can't come into the other camp. Now, saying that you're not allowed to come into something implies that you're outside of it. So, Rav, Rav, so, Rav Yitzchak Bar Avdimi kind of replies in two ways. One of them is, You still haven't brought him in. You're taking him out. So, right, you're saying he's not allowed to, like, you know, come in. So, basically, right. Meaning, so I think the first way to understand this is, Akati lo ayalte, is that basically we say, This is the way I'm understanding it, and the first way to understand it, which is that, lo ayalte, You haven't brought him in yet. Meaning, we haven't said that he left Mach Neshchina yet. So if we're assuming that he's in Mach Neshchina, and we're saying he's a Balkari, so now we're saying, He's got to get out of the Machna. Now he hasn't actually left the Machna yet. And then we're saying, He can't come into the Machna, but we haven't even brought him into the Machna Levia to then take him out of the Machna Levia to then say that he's not allowed to go back into the Machna Levia. Well, he never even went into the Machna Levia. Okay, fine. The other way to understand, which I think is a little bit easier to understand, is Akatilo Afikte, you still haven't taken him out. Ayate, now you're gonna bring him in, right? Meaning So we say, let's say he's in the Machna Shina. So Vyatsa Mchutza Machna, he's gotta he's gotta get out of the Machna Shina and go into the Machna Levia in order to get out. Now it doesn't say yet that he left the Machna Levia, and yet Ayate, and yet the and then yet the Pasik is saying, You're not allowed to come into the Machna Levia, you never left the Machna Levia, you only left the Machne Shechina. Anyways, the point being, Rav Yitzhak Bar Avdimi didn't really understand how this Tana could be teaching that you have to leave the camp and you can't come into the camp it means that you have to leave both the Machne Shechina and the Machne Levia. You didn't get that. Okay, fine. Ella, rather, Rav Yitzhak Bar Avdimi gives his own explanation. So Machne Levia, that when it says that you got to leave the camp, it means you got to leave the Levite camp, meaning we're not talking about a fellow who's currently in Machna Shechina. We're talking about a fellow who's in Machna Levia. And what it's saying is that, um, it says, He's got to leave the camp, i.e. he's got to leave Machna Levia. A Balkari is not allowed in Machna Levia. Now, 
Right? Now, when you leave Machna Leviya, don't leave Machna Leviya to go into Machna Shechina. No, that's the wrong way. Got to leave Machna Leviya to go into Machna Israel and to the rest of Israel, in the rest of uh, Jerusalem. So, so, that's what it means, right? So, Vyotsa Machosa Machna, he's got to leave Machna Leviya. Leyovel Tocha Machna, don't go into Machna Shechina when you leave Machna Leviya. Rather, go to Machna Israel. Okay, sounds good to me. Maskev Lo Ravina, Ravina Asakasha, Ema Yidi Vyidi Le Machna Shechina. I'll say that both of them are talking about Mach Neshchina. V'lavra alav b'aseh v'lo sa'aseh. And said it'll be over in a aseh and a lo ta'aseh. Meaning, he's in the Mach Neshchina. And it's saying, V'yotzal m'chutz ha'mach ne. He's got to leave Mach Neshchina. L'yavo toch ha'mach ne. And don't go into Mach Neshchina. Get out, don't come in. And the reason why it's saying, get out, don't come in, is to say, uh, to be over in an aseh and a lo ta'aseh. It says, V'yotzal m'chutz ha'mach ne. So that's an aseh. L'yavo toch ha'mach ne. Don't come into the camp. That's a lo ta'aseh. So Ravina wants to suggest that maybe they're both talking about Machne Shechina and it's saying don't go out and don't come in. Okay? Imkein lemekro aviyotza mechutza machne v'leyove el toch. So if that was the case then the Apostle can say that he's got to leave the camp and don't come in. Hamachne lamali. Why does it say the camp? Shmamina litein lo machne acheres. So the reason why it has to say camp twice is to give two camps. So Rav Yitzchak Baravdim, he wants to say it's talking about Mach Neshchina and Mach Neleviya. Okay. Says the Mishnah, Umichui Kravav Vichulei. So what do we see? So we basically saw that Abal Keri is like a Zav, that he uh, is not allowed in Mach Neshchina and in Mach Neleviya. Fine. Umichui Kravav Vichulei. So the Mishnah had said that um, this Michui Kravav thing is allowed to be done on Shabbos. So the question is, what is this Michui Kravav? So my Michui Kravav, Ravuna Omar Shemnakvim Bisakin. So Ravuna says, well, you take a knife and you kind of pierce the intestines with a, a, a knife so that like any liquidy, yucky stuff can come out. Sounds gross. Chia Barav Omar. And Chia Barav says also another gross thing. Shirka de Me'aya de Nafka Agab Duchka de Sakina. The slime of the intestines that comes out when you like apply pressure with a knife. Sounds great. Amr Rebelazer, my time at the Chiyabarav, so it says Rebelazer, what, what's, why, why does Chiyabarav say it's talking about like the slime of the intestines? Dixit, because the Pasuk says, V'charvos meichim garim yochelu. So, uh, the way to understand that according to, like in the Tudus David is that, V'charvos meichim, the swords of the Nudniks, garim yochelu, the tzaddikim will eat. Sounds good. And that's actually what Rav Yosef says. My mashma, so how does, no, how do we learn out from this pasuk about tzaddikim and rishayim about intestines? <laughs> so, Ketim Targum of Yosef, as of Yosef translates, v'nichsein der shi'ayat tzaddikaya yachsenun, that the property of the evildoers, the righteous people will take, and what it means is that mechim means rishiaya, mechim is nudniks, and therefore, um, also shirka de me'aya, so like shirka is like slime, like, um, if we had to compare something to nudniks, I guess intestinal slime could be a decent comparison. So that's how we know that michui, um, like mechim, is uh, a reference to intestinal slime. Sounds nice. Ve'okvasim kedavim. And it says in that same pasuk, in the ratio of that pasuk about the nudniks and the tzaddikim, it says that the sheep will graze. So what's, what does this mean? Amar of Menashe bar Yirmiya Amarav. Kimedubar bum. Okay, what does it mean? Kidavram. It means like is said about them. My kimedubar bum. What does it mean that that which is said about them? So Mabai v'charvos mechim garim yochelu. Well, it's like if you continue reading in the pasuk, it says v'charvos mechim garim yochelu. That the um, so what does what does it mean that the sheep will graze? Well, it's like we say that the that the swords of the nudniks that tzaddikim will eat or will take. So also, the first part of the Pasuk is a reference to the tzaddikim sort of having freedom to graze and do their thing. Amrle Ravos, so Ravos responds to the Bible, he says, Bishlama yiksev charvos kedikamrit. If it said charvos without the vav, so I would agree with you, yeah, that the second part of the Pasuk is explaining the first part of the Pasuk, it just flow, it's all one flow. Hashad yiksev charvos milsa achrisei kamar. Now, I'm sorry, so hashad yiksev vicharvos, so now that it says vicharvos with a vav, it's saying an additional thing, a separate thing. So we have the ratio of the Pasuk, then separately we have the Seif of the Pasuk. 
Interesting. So, Avchanan says in the name of Rav that in the future the righteous people will bring back to life the dead people. Because it says over here in this pasuk that the kvasim, the sheep, which is a reference to the um, righteous people. Oh no, that's not what it is. It says that the sheep will graze. Um, will will graze. And it says in a different pasuk, Yiru Vashan Vigilad Kmeolam, that Bashan Vigilad, which we'll explain what that means in a second, will graze Kmeolam. Bashan is Elisha, Habam and Bashan. Bashan is a reference to Elisha, who comes from Bashan. Shinemai is the pasuk says, Vyani Vishafat Ba Bashan, that Yani and Shafat are in Bashan. That's a pasuk in Tiberiyam, Muchsev, Po Elisha ben Shafat. Here is Elisha, the son of Shafat, Ashi Yotzak Mayim, Aide Eliyahu. Um, who poured water by Eliyahu. So we see that Elisha was the son of Shaphat. Shaphat was in the Bashan. And it says Yeru Bashan. And also it says Yeru by um, the future when it says Vero Kvasum Kedavim. So that's how we learn out that the Tzadikim, like Elisha, will uh, bring back to life the Mason. And Gilad, when it says, right, Yeru Bashan Vigilad, so Gilad is Eliyahu. Shinema Vayom Eliyahu Atishbi Mitosh Vigilad Vigomer. That Eliyahu was from uh, Gilad. So we see that um, Tzadikim, like Elisha and Eliyahu, are going to bring back the dead. Sounds nice. Amr Bishmo Banachmani, Amr Bionasan, Asidim Tzadikim Shichyu Meisim. Okay, then in the future, the Tzadikim are going to bring back to life the dead. Shnemar, as the Pazik says, Od Yesh Vuzikainim Vuzikainos Berchovas Rushalayim, that in the future, the elderly will sit in the streets of Jerusalem, Bishmishanto Biado. Um, and each person will have his staff in his hand because he's so old, meaning even though they're so old and they have staffs, but they'll still be able to hang out in the streets and be lively. And it says by Elisha, by the Shunamis, by the, right, that, um, he says, and put my staff on the face of the dead child and he will come back to life. So we see that the Mishenes is a reference to Trias Hamesim. All right. So just like Elisha was bringing back to life, this child also the tzaddikim will bring back to life um, the chevra in the future. Interesting. Ula Rami, Ula asked the following question. On the one hand, said Bila Amovis on the one hand, we have a Pasuk that says that death will be devoured for all eternity. Rashi says Amovis referring to the Malach Amovis. The Malach Amovis will go away on an indefinite vacation. And the Pasuk says, we also have a pasuk that says, "Will a lad, meaning a uh, will a lad who is a hundred years old die?" Meaning, in the future, life is going to be so long that if somebody passes away at a hundred years old, it'll be like they were very a very young lad. So, on the one hand, we see that death is going to go away entirely. On the other hand, we have a pasuk that says that it won't go away entirely; just people are going to live very long lives. So Lokash, it's no problem. Kambi so kamba akum. Depends if we're talking about Jews or non Jews. Okay, I guess non Jews will live for a very long time and um Jews will just live forever. Okay? Bov de Kuchov my bawas and why are we talking about non Jews over here? So the Khsev it says, Wova Amdu Zarim Vro Tsonachem Vnenecher I Karechim Bhomechem. Mm-hmm. Well it says because um the Zarim, the outsiders, the foreigners will get up and will graze your, and will, you know, shepherd your sheep, and um, there will be your farmers and people who work in your vineyards. Interesting. Okay, well, there you go. Weiter. Rav Chizda, Rami, Rav Chizda asks a question. On the one hand, we have a Pasuk that says that the um, moon will sort of go away and the sun will be embarrassed. There won't be a sun and a moon. Uchsev in the Pasuk also says, Vahayo or Levana, Korachama, Vorachama Yeshivasaim, Korachivasayomim. That it says that in the future, the light of the moon will be as bright as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun will be seven times as bright at, as, as it is. Okay? Well, it'll be like seven times times seven times. I think it's like seven times as bright as it, bright as it is times the seven days of the week, something like that. So then seven times seven is, uh, I think, 243, apparently. Something like that. Interesting. So, the Gemara says, 
So, so what's the question? The question is, on the one hand, we have a Pasuk that says that like the sun and the moon are going to go away. On the other hand, we have a Pasuk that says that the sun, that the moon is going to be as strong as the sun is now, and the sun is going to become 243 times stronger. Interesting. Or at least brighter. Um, so what is it? Is the sun and the moon going to go away, or are they going to become like super bright? So we say that there's a distinction here between Olam Abba and Yemos Mashiach, which is very interesting. I don't know what the distinction is. What's the distinction? Anybody else know? I don't know. But, so Yemos Mashiach, I guess, will be when the Messiah comes. And what exactly is Olam Abba? It sounds like sort of a more lofty place than Yemos Mashiach. Is that like paradise? Is it some existence, some reality of the world? I don't know. Also, I thought, I feel like Olam Abba and Yemos Mashiach are often interchangeable in the Gemara. So, I'm not really sure, but there does seem to be some distinction between Yemos Mashiach and Olam Abba, Olam Abba being sort of more lofty, and therefore in Olam Abba, as Rashi says, Shiloyiya ba'olam ele ziv zar umare shechina. There's only going to be the radiance of shechina, so you won't need the sun and the moon. Whereas Yemos Mashiach, it's not going to be quite at that point, but the moon and the sun are both going to be very, very bright. Interesting. What about Shmuel, who says that there really is, as Rashi says, Yemos Mashiach in Mishtan and Mishal Achshav, that the days of Mashiach are not going to be any different than the current days. The only difference is this going to be this Shibud Malchios, which we discussed a little bit in WhatsApp the other day, which I don't think it's super clear exactly. I don't know. I don't know exactly how to understand Shibud Malchios, but it does sound like some kind of a political implication. Um, that will be the only difference between now and then. No, so if that's the case, Michael and Maymar. So, what does this have to do with light? So, what does it mean that the sun is going to be super bright all of a sudden? I thought the sun's going to be as bright as it always was. So, so Shmuel would say that both descriptions are reference to Olam Haba. It just depends where in Olam Haba. It depends if you're in the Machna Shechina, so it'll be entirely just the, radi- the radiance of God. Um, there won't be any sun or moon. But if you're in the Machna Tzadikim, so then there will just be a super duper bright sun and moon. Sounds very interesting. Continues the Gemara. Rava Rami. Rava asked the following question. On the one hand, Ksiv, Ani Amis Vachaya, I will, uh, I will kill and I will, you know, I will bring to, uh, to death and I will bring to life. But it also says that I will injure and also heal. So, the Pasuk already says that God is going to bring the dead to life. Well, then certainly he can heal a wound. That seems to be less uh, severe than bringing from death to life. That seems to be a bigger Kiddush. So the Amr HaKadosh Baruch rather says God, That what it means is that that which I uh, brought to death, I will bring to life, just like that which I wounded, I healed. Meaning... When it comes to wounding and healing, it's obvious that we're talking about the same person, right? Ruvain will break his arm, God will fix it. Um, but you could theoretically think, what does it mean that I, um, what, what, what's the word? Not, I feel like kill isn't the right word, but I don't know. I make die. So I, I'm, you know, you could argue that I make die, meaning I make the people who die die and I make the people who live live, right? Uh, you know, I cause death, but I also cause life. So you might think that that's what it means. So rather, what it means is Masha ani memis ani mechayek ani arpej. No, just like when it comes to uh, healing, I heal the same person that I wound. Meaning, the same person that got wounded is going to get healed. Also, the same person who died is going to come back to life. That is saying that God is going to bring back, going to bring to life the dead. Turn around, and the rabbis taught ani amis vachayek. I will, I will bring to death and I will also bring to life. So is it possible that it means that that they're separate? That this person is going to die and then this baby is going to be born or this person who's alive is going to get food and sustenance. So is it possible they're talking about two different people? So just like the world works. People die, people live. Therefore it says, no, I also wound and I heal. Just like wounding and healing is talking about one individual, so also um, bringing to death and bringing to life is talking about one person that is going to bring the dead people back to life. 
Now, if somebody says to you that there is no concept of bringing the dead back to life written in the Torah, well, you could bring this as a proof. Another way to understand this pasuk is that let's say you have a person who, uh, when he passed away, he had some kind of a disability. So, right, that in the same way that a person passed away, he's going to be brought back to death. So, if they had a certain disability, they will come back to life with that same disability. However, but immediately, also that which I have um, uh, damaged, I will also heal. And therefore, the disability will go away. Vector Chalav of the Chule, so continues the Mishnah and says that you're allowed to burn the fats of the Korban Pesach on Erev Pesach that falls out on Shabbos. Tani will learn advice on Reb Shimon, says Reb Shimon Bar Re'e, Kama Chaviva Mitzvah B'Shaita, come and see how beloved a mitzvah at its proper time is. Because the burning of the fats in the limbs, you're really allowed to do all night. So therefore, um, why not wait until after Shabbos to burn the fats in the limbs? And yet, um, we don't wait until after Shabbos. We even burn the fats in the limbs on Shabbos, of the, well, I guess the fats of the carbon Pesach on Shabbos, because it is so beloved to do a mitzvah at its proper time that you can even do it, um, this particular mitzvah on Shabbos. Interesting. Okay, so this is where we have this Gemara from Daf Kuf Kimmel of Erevin, which was really, really confusing. It's also confusing here, so I'm going to have to get into super focus mode for a second. Um, it's not quite as difficult as in Erevin, because in Erevin, it, it kind of kept on moving with this confusingness because it doesn't say whose opinion is what. It's just like, says, well, the opinion that says this, the opinion that says that, it's, you can't really tag it onto a name. And then in Erevin, it kept on saying the Idah and the other one and the other one and the other one. And you have to keep on remembering who's who. And it's not easy at all. Um, but over here, it doesn't really quite go as far. So hopefully we'll be able to, um, wrap our heads around this a little better. Also, because since I learned it in Erevin the first time, and I, it was so hard to understand that time, it kind of, there's somewhere deep in my brain where there's like a little space where this is packaged away. So it, if I go deep enough and find it, it's kind of like already organized in some way. Here we go. So I have also have also the So the um, Mishnah had said that however... Um, if you take the Korban Pesach and put it on your shoulders and bring it through Rosh Hashanah, or if you take it from outside of Tchum Shabbos, or removing its warts, these things are not Doche Shabbos. So now, we have our Mishnah in Psachim that's saying that removing the warts of a Korban Pesach is not Doche Shabbos. And yet, Veraminu, we have a contradiction. Chot Yabelas Ba Mikdash, Avala Ba Medina. That you are allowed to remove a wart in the Beis HaMikdash. Avala Ba Medina, just not in, just not outside of the Beis HaMikdash. But if you're using an, uh, a utensil, an implement, an implement, maybe, so then um, both will be forbidden in the Mikdash and the Medina, in the base of Mikdash and outside of the base of Mikdash. So, on the one hand, in Sachem we're saying you're not allowed to remove the warts on Shabbos. On the other hand, in Erevin we're saying that you are allowed to remove warts in the base of Mikdash. So what's Pshat? So Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Yossi Bar Chanina. So here we have Machlokas between Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Yossi Bar Chanina. Chad Omer Idi Vidi Biyad Habelach of Habiyavesha. So one opinion is that both Erevin and Psachim, meaning we're talking about in the base of Mikdash, removing a war in the base of Mikdash. In Psachim we say it's not allowed. In Erevin we say it is allowed. So one opinion is that both of them are Biyad. In both cases you're using your hand, but Habelach or Habiyavesha. It just depends if the um, wart is moist or if it's dry. If it's moist, it's not allowed, like in Psachim. If it's dry, it is allowed. That's what we're talking about in Erevin. Bechad Omar, Idi Idi Belacha, Lokash Abiyad Habachli. The other opinion is that both in Erevin and in Psachim, we're talking about moist warts, yet it just depends how you're removing it. If you're removing it with your hand, then it's okay in the base of Mikdash. That's what it says in Erevin. Over here in Psachim, it says it's not allowed if, if you're removing it bichli. Okay, fine. Here we go. 
Now, Manda Omar, Habiyar Abichli, so the Manda Omar says that both in Erevin and Psachim, we're talking about a moist wart, but in Psachim, you're moving it with a utensil, and in Erevin, you're moving it with your hand. And therefore, in Erevin, it's allowed, in Psachim, it's not. My time alo Omar, Idivi Idi Biyad. How come he didn't say that both Psachim and Erevin are talking about removing it with your hand? Lokash Abalach Abiyavesha. Just that in Erevin, it's talking about a dry wart, and in Psachim, it's talking about a moist wart. Omalach Yavesha Mifach Pricha. Well, he'll say that the problem with that is that obviously, if you're removing a dry wart with your hand, it's going to be allowed because mifrach pricha, it just kind of breaks up. Like it's not even, there's nothing to even talk about. Obviously it's okay. You're not even doing anything. It's like just going to flake away. So therefore he says, no, they're both talking about moist warts. Okay. Manda Amr, Yidavid, Biyad. And according to Manda Amr, who said that both in Psachman and Erevin, we're talking about removing it with your hand, which is that in Erevin, we're talking about Dry, and in Pesachim we're talking about moist. Lokasha belacha biyavesha. My time lo amar idiv idiv belacha. How come he didn't say that both in Pesachim and in Erevin we're talking about moist warts? Lokasha yad abichli, and it's no problem. Just that in Erevin we're talking about removing it with your hand, and, and therefore it's permitted. In Pesachim we're talking about removing it with a utensil, and therefore it's not allowed. So amalach, so he's going to say to you. Well, he will say, right, meaning the Mandam who says that both in Erevin and Psachim we're talking about Biyad. So he'll say, well, if you learn that they're both talking about moist, and the issue in Psachim is that it's talking about Bichli, well, the Mishnah in Erevin already told us that if you use a Kli, then it's not allowed in either cases. So why do I need the Mishnah in Psachim to say that you're not allowed to use a Kli to remove it. We know that already from Erevin. That's why this opinion would be that both, both in Erevin and Pesachim are talking about Biyad. The Idach and the other Mandamer, Mandamer who says that they're both talking about moist, but in Pesachim we are talking about with a Kli. Don't we already know that from Erevin? Hadikatani Kli, Hacha, the reason why we had to mention Kli over here in Pesachim is because it just wanted us to know about the machlokas between Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua. That Rabbi Eliezer says that even though um, it's bechli, it's with a utensil and it's also midoraisa, nonetheless, Rabbi Eliezer says that you'd be allowed to remove the wart on Shabbos since it is a machshiri mitzvah. And we know from the parak in Masech the Shabbos of Rabbi Eliezer de Mila that machshiri mitzvah adochen is a Shabbos. Um, so we wanted to explain the Machlokos to Nabi Lezer who says that nonetheless you're allowed to remove the wart and Nabi Yeshua who says that you are not allowed to remove the wart okay I think we got through that without making mistakes so that that worked out I mean it's super confusing but I think it worked out okay you see in, in Erevin we kept on then going on I think with like two more ve'idachs so and you have to keep on remembering like wait are we talking about the moist opinion where there's an afkamina between biyad and bechli or are we talking about the biyad opinion where there's an afkamina between lach and yvesha it's like Anyways, I think we got through that relatively okay. Amr Belazar Umaim Shkita Vichule. So now, Rabbi Eliezer had responded to Rabbi Yoshua, right? Because Rabbi Eliezer says that you're allowed to, let's say, bring a korban from outside of Tchum Shabbos on, uh, on Shabbos, the korban Pesach, right? So now, he had, Rabbi Eliezer had made this Kavachomer. Well, if I can do Shkita on Shabbos for the korban Pesach, which is a mitzvah, door, which is an Isidor Raisa, certainly then, I could bring an animal from outside of Tchum Shabbos, which generally is, is assumed to be only a shvos, only also midor abonah. Except, of course, Rabbi Akiva says it's midor Isa. But let's not worry about that right now. So, now, Rabbi Yeshua had responded in saying that, that that's not necessarily a good proof. Because, what about Yom Tif? Yom Tif, you're allowed to do shchita, which is an iser midor Isa, and yet, you're not allowed to bring an animal from outside of the Tchum. So we see that there are places where Doraisas are Mutter and Dorabanans are Aser, to which Rabbi Eliezer responded, and he says, what do you mean, don't bring me a proof 
from Yom Tif. And the fact that you want to bring an animal on Yom Tif from outside of Tchum Shabbos so that you can enjoy your Yom Tif Suda, that's a Rishos. That's that right. That's volitional. You wanna you wanna have a delicious meal, so you wanna bring an animal for out from outside of the tchum. That's not gonna be allowed here. I'm talking about bringing outside an animal from outside of the tchum, so that I could use it in the context of my mitzvah of carbon pesach. So therefore, it's no comparison. So the Gemara says, well, that's actually not necessarily so true because according to Rabbi Yoshua, actually simchas yom is midah araisa. It's a mitzvah, and therefore, bringing an animal from outside of the tchum on Yom Tif is actually a mitzvah and still we're saying that you're not allowed to do it. So, so, so says the Gemara, Rabbi Yeshua the time, Rabbi Yeshua is in accordance with his reasoning, that he says that en- enjoying yourself on Yom Tif is actually a mitzvah. So his proof then, his argument is then actually bringing an animal on, from outside the Tchum on Yom Tif, which is a mitzvah, but it's also a shvus and yet it's not allowed. The Tanis we learn in Abraisa, Rabbi Eliezer Omer says, Rabbi Eliezer, Ein lo lo'odim b'yom tif, ela o'och v'shose, o yoshev v'shonu. So says Rabbi Eliezer, that on yom tif, a person has two options. Either eat all day, and drink all day, or learn all day. But those are your two options. Rabbi Yeshua Omer, Chalkeyu chetzio l'achile v'shtiya v'chetzio l'vei samejish. Whereas, Rabbi Yeshua says, no, divide it in half. Chatzio l'achem, chatzio l'ashem. Spend half the day in the Beis HaMedjah, spend half the day eating and drinking. Divide it up. So Rabbi Dezer says, take your choice. Either spend the day learning or spend the day eating. But those are your choices. Rabbi Yeshua says, divide it in half. Amr Rabbi Yochanan says, Rabbi Yochanan v'shnei mikra echa darshu, that they both learn out their opinions from the same pasuk. Chosvechad omer atzeres l'ashem elokecha, chosvechad omer atzeres te'ya lochem. One pasuk says, that uh, the seventh day of Pesach will be a day of Atzeres for God. And then it says about Shemini Atzeres that it will be, Atzeres Te'alachem, it will be a day for you. So B'lezer says, okay, so one Pesach says for God, one Pesach says for you, so take a choice. Either spend the day with God or spend the day with yourself. Rabbi Yeshua says, no, divide it in half. Spend half the day in the Beis HaMedjish, spend half the day um, eating and drinking. What do you guys think? What's like, which like approach conceptually do you like better? Say, you know, either do completely A or completely B or do chetzi chetzi. I don't know. I can kind of hear like the binary approach. It's definitely easier to understand, right? Just spend the whole day in the base of measures. Don't leave. Or spend the whole day at your table. Don't leave. I guess it gets, you know, what exactly is half? Anyways. Omer Belazer says, Belazer akomodim ba'atzeres. Everyone agrees that on Shavuos, deba'ina nami lachem, that everyone agrees that on Shavuos, even Rabbi Yezer says that you're going to need on Shavuos to have some amount of lachem, of eating. My time, how come? Yom shenit nebo Torah. Well, because who? Well, it's because it's the day that the Torah was given. And the assumption is, if the Torah was given that day, you have to um, go out and have a good time. And I guess Torah isn't going to be considered enough of a good time. You got to make sure that you, yourself, have uh, some enjoyment there. Okay? Amar Rabbah says, Rabbah, akomodim b'shabbos to be in anami lachem. Rabbah says, everyone agrees that also on Shabbos you need lachem. You have to enjoy yourself. My time I'll come because of the Shabbos Onik. Well, it says because you will call Shabbos a delight. So you have to delight yourself. Um, Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef says that everyone agrees on Purim that you need to enjoy yourself. My time I'll come because it says it's a day of, of feasts and happiness. So you got to enjoy yourself. Marbe de Ravina, this is super interesting, that Marbe de Ravina kulashat ava Yosef betainisa. Interesting. Marbe de Ravina would always be fasting the entire year. Hmm. The Varmiatsartu Furya Umali Yoma de Kippur. Except for Shavuos, Purim, and Erev Yom Kippur. Those days he wouldn't fast. At Saras Yom Shinit Nabot Torah, he would refrain from fasting on Shavuos because that's the day that the Torah was given. Puraya Yimemishta Visimcha, Ksiv. On Purim, it says, it's the day of feasting and happiness. So he would feast and be happy. 
Mali Yom Tikipure, and he would eat on Erev Yom Kippur, the Tanichia Bar of Midifti, Vinisim Snafshur Seich, and Betisha Al Chodesh, that you will afflict your souls on the ninth of Tishrei. What do you mean that you're going to afflict your souls on the 9th of Tishrei? We don't fast on the 9th of Tishrei, we fast on the 10th of Tishrei. Rather to say to you, that anybody who eats and drinks on the 9th day of Tishrei, I will treat it as though he fasted for two days, for the 9th and the 10th. So by eating on the 9th of Tishrei, it's like you fasted that day, plus the next day on Yom Kippur. So therefore, um, my brother Ravina would make sure to eat on Erev Yom Kippur. And so do we. Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef on Shavuos, Amr Avdali Igla Tilsa, he would say, make for me an, you know, a, a, an Igla Tilsa. An Igla Tilsa, in the Gemara is, you know, it means like a really good calf. And the third one to be born to its mother. For whatever reason, that's considered to be the best one. Omri said, Ilo Hayoma to Kagarim, super interesting. He said, if not for the fact that we have this day, the day that the Torah was given, Kama Yosef Ika Bishuka, there's lots of Yosefs in the Shuk, and I would be no different than them. But because we have the Torah, and I've been able to devote my life to Torah, um, you know, I can become unique in that way. I'm not just like everybody else. I, I have the Torah to be able to learn. Very interesting. Rav Sheshes, Kotzlas and Yomen, Mahader Le Tamude. Interesting. Rav Shesha, Rav Shesha, every 30 days, he would review all of his learning. Interesting. Vitali Vikai be Ibra Dadasha, and he would stand in the threshold of the door. Vaomar, and he would say, Chadoi nafshoi, Chadoi nafshoi, Lech karoi, Lach karoi, Lach tanoi. Wow. And he would say, My soul be happy, my soul rejoice. For you, I read the Torah, for you, I teach, you know, I learn Mishnayas. Wow. Ini, is this really true? That like learning Torah is for the soul, is for yourself? The Amr Abelazar, Abelazar said, Ilmalei Torah, lo niskai mushmai v'ar, it said, if not for the Torah, the, the heavens and the earth would not exist, would not be able to, you know, uh, yeah, exist, they would fall apart, I guess. Shnemar, the puzzle says, Mlobrisi yom v'alei lechuk v'shmai v'ar, it's if not for my covenant, day and night, the laws of the heaven and earth, I would not place. So, we see that the Torah isn't just for us as individuals, it's also the whole world is dependent on the Torah. So the more answers may kar kyovid inish hadai to zanafshe kovid. Yeah, it's true that Torah has sort of these broader implications for the well-being of the world, but when a person's studying Torah, he's studying it for himself. And still, you know, and then and then from there it kind of expands outward towards the more sort of global implications of it. Interesting. Okay, and then to wrap up here, Taf Samaches, Amr Ravashi says, Ravashi, Ulmadi Kamar, Biliezer, Nami, Yom Tev Rishus, Islay, I'm sorry, Rishus, Islay, Pirchos. Now, Rabiliezer says that on Yom Tev, eating on Yom Tev is a, right, Simchas Yom Tev is a Rishus, right? He assumed, and that was his whole assumption, is that, um, Rabbi Yeshua, how can you say that on Yom Tev, um, you know, taking an animal from outside of, 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 of the, of, of the trum is only rishos. Whereas here by Korban Pesach, it's a mitzvah. So Rabbi Leezer is assuming that Simchas Yom Tov is a rishos. And also, as we saw earlier, it's either entirely for God or entirely for you. But you don't need to necessarily enjoy yourself on Yom Tov. So Yisle Pircha, you can ask a question. Um, Yom Tov shitir ba malacha shor rishos, lo hitir shvos, lo hitir shvos she'im, she'ima. Well, on Yom Tif, that, um, on Yom Tif, where you're allowed to shecht, uh, uh, an animal, on Yom Tif, to eat, just for a rishos, it's not a mitzvah, right? But on Yom Tif, even just for yourself, you're allowed to do shechita, and yet, you're not allowed to do rishos, uh, um, um, this shvos that's even a rishos. So, meaning you're allowed to do the, the more stringent, Milacha for Rishos, but not just like a Dirabanon. Shabbos Shalohitir ba Ela Milacha Shal Mitzvah and Udin Shalotatir Shavos Sheima. Well, then Shabbos, which you're not allowed to just do voluntary slaughterings of animals that you have food to eat, you're only allowed to slaughter an animal on Shabbos if it's a mitzvah. Well, then certainly Shavos would not be allowed. 
right? If if on Yom Tiv, where 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 it's more lenient in that you're allowed to do shrita just even for rishos, and yet still you're not allowed to do these shvoses of bringing an animal from outside of Yom Tiv, well then Rabbi Yezer, Shabbos, which is more chamor, in that you're only allowed to do shrita if it's for a mitzvah. Well then certainly the shvos won't be allowed. Rabbi Eliezer, Shavuz de Mitzvah, other flavor, whereas Rabbi Eliezer says, no, but it's different when it comes to Shavuz de Mitzvah. That even though, yes, on Yom Tif, where you're allowed to do Shrita, volitional Shrita, nonetheless, you're not allowed to do Shavuz, but over here, even though we're talking about Shabbos, where only a Shrita de Mitzvah is allowed, well then, nonetheless, a Shavuz of a Mitzvah, such as to bring an animal from outside of the Trum Shabbos so you can have a Korban Pesach, that would be permitted nonetheless, um, even though the Shavuz de Rishus wouldn't be allowed, which was the mitzvah. So you can do a mitzvah, it would be okay. So that was the Afsamaches. It was a whole chock of a million things. Hard, confusing, nice, agarita. You got everything here in the Afsamaches. So we started out with Balkaris, basically affirming the fact that a Balkari needs to be sent out of Machna Shrina, Machna Levia. We got up to some interesting agaritas about Tchiyasam Esim and how God is going to, you know, the Tzadikim are going to be sort of starting, uh, going to bring the mason back to life. We had the opinion of Shmuel, right, in the context of like uh, Olam Haba and 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 Imos Mashiach, some kind of distinction of Olam Haba being sort of like more spiritual than Imos Mashiach, and then within Olam Haba having realms of like God, an area of God, an area for Tzadikim, all sorts of interesting things. We saw the opinion, once again, of Shmuel, who says that Imos Mashiach really is just going to be essentially the same as these days, Except for this um, sort of esoteric Shibud Malchios. Or maybe it's not esoteric. Maybe I just don't know what it means. Then we got to that complicated of uh, Gemara that we saw in Erevin about removing warts in the Beis HaMikdash. Because in Pesachim we say you're not allowed to and in Erevin we say you are allowed to. So in the Maisa we saw two different opinions that say, well, one is that you're allowed to remove a wart in the Beis HaMikdash if it's moist but you're using your hand. The other way to understand it is that if it's dry and you're using your hand, but as the as the Mishnah said in no, as the Mishnah says, yeah, in in Erevin, that if it's bechli kan v'chan also, you're not allowed to use a kli. Then we had a machlokas between Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Yeshua regarding Simchas Yom Tif. Rabbi Yezer says either you spend the whole day eating and drinking, or you spend the whole day in the Beis Hamedrash, one or the other. Whereas Rabbi Yeshua says that you divide it in half, chazi l'Hashem chazi l'Chem, half of it. Um, you're in the base of Medjish and half of it you're eating. But everyone agrees that on Shavuos you would, um, you know, spend half the day eating because, um, or at least there's a mitzvah to eat on, on Shavuos. What did we say? We said that everyone agrees on Shavuos, um, that you also need at least some amount of, of, of lachem. I don't know if it necessarily means half. Um, because that was the, the Torah was given, and then we saw all these different uh, things about the, you know, maybe that there's an opinion that you have to spend some time for yourself on Shabbos, on Yom Tif, on, on Purim, because there's a Mishnah V'Simcha, different things like that, which are very interesting. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed Daf Samaches. Have a great day. Peace.